Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Today is the final day of the mayoral election campaign in the city of Rzeszów. The campaign has been followed with great interest by political observers as it is the first large-scale election since the presidential election in June last year and the parliamentary election in the autumn of 2019. The centre-left opposition, comprising three larger parties, has managed to field a joint candidate, Konrad Fiołek. The ruling Law and Justice Party has decided to bet on Eva Leniart, while the junior coalition partner in the government, United Poland, is running with Marcin Wachow. Zegors Brown will represent the right-wing opposition party, Confederation. According to the latest IBRIS poll for the Polsat group, Konrad Fiołek remains the leader amongst the Jesha voters with 47.6%. This candidate is supported by all opposition parties except for the Confederation. I believe that the elections in Zeshev will be decided in the first round. The inhabitants of Zeshev have had enough of this campaign. They want to bet on Konrad Fiołek and take a rest from serious politics. Most polls place Eveleniart in second place. The current governor of the Podkarpacie region in southeastern Poland, of which Zeshev is the largest city, enjoys the support of around 25% of voters. First of all, she is one of the best governors in Poland. And secondly, Miss Eva Leniart has a personal relationship with the city of Zeshov. The intensive election campaign of MP Zegov Brown from the Confederation has made him rise in the polls. He has doubled his support, which now stands at over 13%. He is undoubtedly the most expressive candidate for mayor of Zeshov, and I believe that he is the only candidate able to enter the second round and break up the local power structures. Despite the support of Tadeusz Ferenc, former SLD politician and longtime mayor of Zeshov, the Deputy Minister of Justice, Marcin Wachow, is in fourth place in most polls. His support hovers around 12%. It is easy to see that he can build bridges locally. It's clear that he can build support for local initiatives, which gives him a better chance for ultimate electoral success from the perspective of the right wing. As from midnight, as in every election campaign, the election silence begins. Therefore, the committees of all candidates are using the last hours of the campaign to try to convince voters in Zeshov. Switzerland could become the first European country to ban artificial pesticides in a referendum to be held on the 13th of June, which backers of the initiative hope will trigger similar prohibitions elsewhere. Globally, only Bhutan has a complete ban on synthetic pesticides, according to supporters aiming to outlaw the use of products made by agrochemical giants such as Switzerland's Syngenta and Germany's Bayer and BASF. Supporters of the ban say the artificial products cause serious health problems and reduce biodiversity. Manufacturers say their pesticides are rigorously tested and regulated, can be used safely and crop yields would slump without them. Another initiative to be voted on the same day aims to improve the quality of Switzerland's drinking water and food by stopping direct subsidies to farmers who use artificial pesticides and antibiotics in livestock. If both these initiatives were to be accepted, that would be a wonderful signal for the whole world. Switzerland would be one of the first countries that will use biologically friendly, sustainable products over the long term. That would be incredibly great for people's quality of life. Our drinking water will, sometime in the future, 20 or 30 years from now, be pure again. Our soil will be fertile again and we would have less dependence on foreign countries, because our farmers produce bio-friendly products, which means they need fewer additives. If they were to fail, we would revert to the status quo. Policies will carry on as before, without being forward-looking, and our drinking water will be further contaminated, and worse, our soils will become more contaminated, because farming will definitely become more intensive. It will be an absolute loss and a missed opportunity. The Clean Water Initiative also wants farmers to stop using imported animal feed to restrict the numbers of cows, pigs and chickens in Switzerland, along with the manure they produce that can pollute drinking water. The Swiss Farmers Union said many of its members feel their way of life is under siege. This initiative wants that we only uh, can have as much cattle on the farm as we can feed with our own feed. And that's just not possible. Um, and the results would be our production would go rapidly down. We won't have any Swiss chicken uh, meat. We won't have any Swiss uh, pig meat. And the result would be there would be much more import, much more food would come from uh, outside countries into Switzerland. So, Opponents of the proposal say that the measures go too far, since its supporters don't know enough about agriculture. Now you find a lot of people, especially in the cities, they have not even a clue 
what farming means. So if they have two tomatoes in their garden in front of the window, they think they understand farming and they know how to do organic farming. The vote is set to be close as a recent Tamedia poll shows that 48% of voters favour the drinking water initiative and 49 support the pesticide ban. The leaders of six Western Balkans countries and European Neighbourhood and Enlargement Commissioner Oliver Varheli have met in Albania's capital Tirana to discuss how to speed up the region's integration into the European Union. The EU's newly adopted economic and investment plan for the region was also one of the main topics of the meeting. The EU's economic and investment plan for the region was introduced by the EU in October. It should bring almost 30 billion euros of investments to the Western Balkans region, said Varheli during a press conference after the summit. And we are ready to put our offer on the table and reconfirm our commitment that we have put on the table already in October with the economic and investment plan. The economic and investment plan, which is mobilizing one third of the GDP of the region, almost 30 billion euros of investments to come. But that plan will never work if the region doesn't work as one, if we don't have a regional market. The six countries participating at the meeting, Albania, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Kosovo, Montenegro, North Macedonia and Serbia, all aim to join the European Union. Varheli said that the EU would hold meetings with Serbia and Montenegro to continue their accession negotiations and that Brussels would also like to have its first intergovernmental conferences with Albania and North Macedonia. Both Serbia and Montenegro are membership candidates, while Bosnia and Kosovo, Serbia's now independent former southern province, lag behind. Bulgaria refuses to allow North Macedonia, another ex-Yugoslav Republic, to move ahead in its EU bid, citing language and cultural disputes. We want to have intergovernmental conferences with Serbia and Montenegro to continue their accession negotiations. We want to have the first intergovernmental conferences with Albania and North Macedonia. And we have this summit to deliver for the people on the ground. Albanian Prime Minister Edi Rama said that the economic plan was the EU's largest move towards the region and that it would improve its infrastructure and energy sector. The process is supported by a financial package in the framework of the economic and investment plan of the European Union with funds made available for regional cooperation and radical improvement of road infrastructure, railways, ports, interconnectivity and of the entire energy sector, as well as digitalization. It constitutes the largest historic move of the European Union towards the Western Balkans. Albania, which is also part of the Western Balkans region, but which was not part of Yugoslavia, became a candidate in 2014. The staff at the zoo in the Polish town of Płock have proudly presented its two new Siberian tiger cubs, born in late April. The zoo representatives say that they are very happy about the new cubs, as the breed is part of the European Endangered Species Programme. Keeper Margarita Czinska said that it was only when staff noticed the cubs' distinctive meowing that they realised they had been born. The birth of the cubs was an extremely exciting moment for us. There was not a particular due date determined, more like a range of days when the birth might happen. So when we entered the enclosure on the day and heard the characteristic sounds made by the cubs, it was such a joyous, incredibly joyous moment for us. The cubs are now big enough to fight playfully with each other and the brother is already larger than his sister. A competition will be held by the zoo to find names for the new arrivals. A female Siberian tiger can give birth to up to six cubs. Litters like this happen. But we are very pleased with our pair. We have a male and a female, so we think this is good for the future of the species. Zoo director Krzysztof Kelman said the birth of the animals for the first time in Płock Zoo was a huge success, with the, response, with the possibility of increasing the numbers of the species through a breeding program. The main reason why zoos exist is to breed rare animals that are endangered in nature. So when such animals are born, it is a huge success for any zoo because this is how they can protect the animals. The Siberian tiger cubs that have been born for the first time in the history of our zoo are the most endangered subspecies of tiger. There are only several hundred of them in the whole world. So it's a first birth and a huge success. We now have a tigress nursing two cubs, a pair that we hope we will be able to breed. There are only a few hundred Siberian tigers living in the wild, Kelman said, 
According to him, over the last two years, 23 cubs were born in seven zoos in Europe. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow. Thank you.